Hello, welcome to the Monday, January 14th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. If you are running into any US federal government websites with expired TLS certificates, this may be due to the shutdown of many federal government offices. The shutdown left some sites unmaintained. You should still not accept these certificates and avoid the sites if at all possible. Also keep in mind that while these outdated certificates are likely just a harmless misconfiguration, there is always a chance that malicious actors are taking advantage of the confusion. While I do not believe .gov websites usually use Let's Encrypt, the Acme protocol Let's Encrypt uses to automate certificate maintenance could actually help in situations like this to keep certificates renewed. And of course, we have seen it multiple times in the past where certificates did expire just because, well, someone forgot to set their calendar alert to renew them. Automating this is always a nice option. And have you migrated all your Windows 7 systems to Windows 10 yet? If not, it may be time to come up with a transition plan. Windows 7 will reach end of life one year from today. It's actually in the extended maintenance period right now. One year from today, you will not even receive security patches for Windows 7 anymore unless you pay Microsoft a special extended, extended maintenance fee. Now, Windows 7 hasn't been for sale since October 2016 and it was only with new systems. So hopefully by now you have gotten around to at least go to Windows 8.1. That gives you another two years or so. But if you still have Windows 7 systems, well, uh, move to Windows 10 right away. And by the way, this is also the last year for Adobe Flash. Adobe announced that it will discontinue support for Flash in 2020. Firefox will actually disable Flash, Flash by default in version 69, which will be released in September. So in case you have still some of these old Flash websites sitting around, you got about a year to convert them to HTML5 or some other more modern technology. And a security researcher using the Twitter handle FFFF0800 came across some interesting malware that disguises as a copy of the movie The Girl in the Spider's Web. Of course, a big movie right now, and the file uses a pretty well known trick to execute a PowerShell script that uh, looks like a link, and uh, this will then, of course, install additional malware. In addition to injecting ads into well-known websites like Google and other search engines. The malware is attempting to steal crypto coin key material and probably most interesting, I don't think I've seen that before, the malware is injecting fake donation messages into Wikipedia. If you have been to Wikipedia, you probably noticed that sometimes they're asking for donations. In this case, the hacker will replace the message with their own donation message. Of course, they only accept. Bitcoin. And then we got reports of the JET database patch uh, that was released by Microsoft last week, causing some problems for users of Access 97. The error that you may be seeing is a failure getting access to MDB database. A blog post by freelance writer Gunther Born describes some workarounds that may help you fix the problem without actually having to uninstall the patch. But the simplest solution is probably still just uh, to remove the patch and hope for Microsoft to come up with an improved version. And in diaries this weekend, we have one by Guy about SnorPy. Don't confuse it with the Snort Log Analysis front end Snorby. SnorPy doesn't help you view Snort Logs. Instead, it helps you write Snort rules. Now, not sure how helpful you'll find. I think it's really more a tool for users that are new to Snort or someone who only occasionally needs to write a Snort rule. It's essentially sort of a GUI that allows you or that guides you through writing Snort rules. 
Personally, what I'm really looking for is a nice open source uh, system to actually manage snored signatures across multiple sensors. There used to be something like this around. Haven't really seen anything nice open source uh, like this uh, recently. And on Friday, I posted a little packet challenge to Twitter. If you saw it, I posted a solution now as well. You can get access uh, to the PCAP also. I will post a URL to the solution and with that, of course, also to the PCAP, to the show notes. And well, uh, maybe I'll get around to this sort of on Fridays uh, that uh, I'll post a little packet challenge like this for all those people that enjoy decoding packets from Hex. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.